good morning YouTube. I've always liked to play around with uh, physical computing and recent developments have made this extremely low entry. I've written a blog post on how easy it is to uh, obtain these little MCUs, tiny computers and how to get started. And in this latest blog post I've expressed a surprise that um, it was actually getting so cheap. You can see here that AliExpress is offering the ESP for only one euro and 67 cents at the moment. So that's one thing, it's getting very easy to obtain these little devices, but it's going to be very easy to develop for these tiny little beasts as well. The guys from uh, Seed Studio, they are doing amazing things with the Kickstarter for Weolink, which I mentioned in the blog as well over here. So the Weolink is basically allowing you to plug in modular hardware modules that yeah, you can actually slot in there and indicate which modules you have in which slot and then it automatically adjusts the firmware and uploads to the device. However, even uh, without their good stuff, uh, it has really never been as easy to develop firmware for these devices. Um, it's, I think, also thanks to an initiative called Platform.io, which have made things uh, really dramatically easy. So I've got a page here, Platform.io, is an open source ecosystem for IoT development and they have opened up the doors for the ESP8266 as well. So if you look at the boards page, you can actually see that it is mentioned in there. Uh, there you go. Espressive is supported and you've got the ESP01 and e ESP12E. Uh, by the way, this is still indicating the old ESP that has 512 kilobytes of memory, uh, which is a little bit little. Um, I would say if you can get the new versions that have a, a, a megabyte in there as well. Um, that's going to help you because things like over-the-air uh, firmware upgrades and stuff is going to take a lot from your memory and if you want to do that you definitely need the uh, one megabyte of memory in there. So getting back to platform IO because I think it's making things really really easy it basically installs the SDK for you it takes care of all the plumbing that uh, really needs to get you started and yeah with this little video demo I'd like to show you how easy it is to get things started now I'm working on, on a Mac nowadays and um, uh, so that's why I've rendered my Windows setup obsolete to, uh, so to say I was using an uh, software in there that doesn't really work well with my Mac and that's why platform IO is also brilliant because it's you know sets up the entire uh, environment by itself already without you having to do all the installations of SDKs and all that sort of thing so it's really really helpful so just to get started um, you need two modules uh, which is SCONS. SCONS is at the heart of Platform.io. It's basically taking care of all the hard work that Platform.io is basically doing. And Platform.io, you can see it as a set of scripts around SCONS. Now to get started, it's really uh, the setup of uh, SCONS as well as Platform.io, of course. So I'm going to sudo and into pip. Pip is the Python installer. And I'm going to install SCONS with a few parameters that are required just to get it installed on my Mac. Install option. Um, it unfortunately needs to take these options because otherwise it really won't install. Um, due to you know re uh, requirements and limitations of, uh, of uh, the Python environment in the Mac. So here you go, it's starting to install. And after the setup has run, it has successfully installed it. So the next thing is that I have to install um, Platform.io itself, which also goes with pip install, and this is going to be much easier. And there you go, it's running setup, and after that, uh, platform IO should be on my computer. Now, well, that's basically it. Um, so now I can actually start developing my first project already. So I'm going into my work directory. I think I've got the ESP, which should be blank, right? And I'm going to create a directory called test. And in this test directory, I'm basically going to build. Um, 
well in this case I'm going to build an Arduino uh, type uh, project for my ESP so that's going to be start kickstarted with platform IO platform IO init uh, the init function is setting up your uh, environment and I'm going to say that this board that I'm using is a node MCU um, I would advise to use node MCU all the time even though it's not a node MCU it's for instance a plain ESP and it has to do with um, with the reset the reset command going from the ESP tool later can be either node MCU reset or a CK reset and on a Mac the CK reset doesn't really work well so if you're using a Mac definitely set it up to node MCU because it uses the right reset sequence so from here um, is basically setting up a skeleton of um, my application I've got it here now and if I look in the directory that I've got I've, I can see git ignore a Travis a lib platform IO and a source uh, directory so the first thing I need to do is basically to start developing my application and I can start developing my application from the sources directory so feeling a bit lazy and all I think I'm not going to build that thing myself just to take it a bit easy I'm gonna cut and paste something in here which is downloading a file from github and putting it into the sources directory in the main.ino so here you go I've now one file in my sources directory there you go which is main.ino and in this main.ino it's actually a source file that helps me to start building applications um, by having some preliminary uh, over-the-air firmware upgrading stuff in there so now this is this is in the source directory I can start basically compiling it and streaming it up to my uh, to my device so the next thing I should do is to modify the firmware a little bit so that it works with my Wi-Fi environment and then I can start uploading it so what I'll be doing is launch Atom so let's launch Atom So here's my editor and I've already opened up the main.ino that I just downloaded. <coughs> now from here I can see that I have an SSID that I need to fill in. I will key in my personal home SSID here and of course the password. And with this, um, well if you can see that it's actually starting with a setup. Um, over here the, the serial uh, port is being uh, taken care of and it will give um, line that says that it's booting uh, from there it will uh, try to get a Wi-Fi connection if it doesn't it will go up obviously in a boot loop so it will keep on booting until it's got a Wi-Fi connection then um, this is comments it will indicate that it's starting this part is basically setting the handlers for start end and to show the progress of updating uh, the firmware over here it's actually kicking off the over-the-air routines uh, indicating that it's ready for business and it shows the IP address which is really convenient because then you'll be able to get your environment such that you can update this particular ESP over the air so the next thing is that you will have a loop that's basically handling all the over the air requests that are coming in and eventually you'll be doing a lot more in this loop to you know handle your GPIO and to do web server events and that sorts of things so this is basically a skeleton to get started with uh, over the air updating now the next thing is to get this into your ESP of course so what I'm going to do is I'm going to back to my prompt and I'm going to run platform IO run which is taking care of the compilation of the firmware but I'm also going to upload it into uh, my ESP device that I've got um, the nice thing is I have not configured any ports or whatsoever um, it's going to try to find your USB port by itself that's quite convenient because you don't have to set COM ports and that sorts of things so the only thing that's left to do is to you know basically upload it and to run this um, now the thing is, um, I don't have the Espressif SDK installed yet, so it will immediately ask me to install it into my home directory somewhere. So yeah, I'd like to install that because otherwise I won't be able to compile anything. Um, now it's uh, installing it and that's actually done in quite a short time as well. 
So you can see it download the frameworks for Expressive. Uh, the, the ESP tool has been downloaded already. It's unpacking it. The tool chain. Wow, a minute and a half just flew by very, very quickly. I cut a little bit short over there. Just want to say that just like installation, the updating process is just as simple uh, to get your SDK and everything updated again. Uh, it's a matter of running the same thing with an update statement instead of an install statement. And that will help you to, to update your entire tool suite again to the latest versions, which is really convenient. So what you see here is that my application is already compiling. Uh, the tool stack has been downloaded, SDKs have been downloaded and my firmware is uh, about to be ready. So here you go, it's installed it. Um, my unit has been compiled and is now basically sending out the firmware to the ESP itself. You can now start seeing the ESP starting to blink as well, which is, means that it's receiving the flash data from, uh, from my computer over USB and it's been done in 159 seconds i've both installed the whole sdk as well as compiled my application the esp platform and uploaded it into the esp itself which is i think quite remarkable compared to what i did previously with open esp sdk which cost me at least a half an hour to just compile so i'm going to make a tiny little change to the application to the to the firmware itself i'm going to turn this into ready for business and then I'm going to run the whole uh, compilation process again. Then you can see that it actually takes a lot less time to compile it now because it doesn't have to download the platform anymore. So this is the compilation process taking place. And right now it's starting to upload already. So it's writing the flash into the ESP at the moment. And once it's done all right it's been flashed it took 30 seconds well a little bit more than 30 seconds to compile it and to upload it into the chip itself so with this we should be able to go into the device on the serial port to see what it's basically doing and this is the device itself it doesn't show much because um, it's basically in a loop where it doesn't do anything except for handling OTA uh, requests. So I'm going to reset it to make that screen turn into something more lively. So you can actually see that it's, that it's ready for business now. It is connected to the Wi-Fi network and it's received an IP address which ends with 240. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to see if I can update this uh, over the air. Now the only thing I need to do for that is to add a little line to the platformio.ini. So the .ini file actually indicates what kind of device I'm using. It shows the platform, it shows the framework and the board and with uh, an extra line in this uh, platformio.ini I can actually indicate that I don't want to update this over a USB wire anymore but through the air. So the secret line for this is the line called Upload Port. Upload Port allows me to set to, um, suppose I have multiple ESPs on my uh, computer, I can actually indicate which of the ESPs I would like to upload, but I can also use it to set an IP address of the device I would like to update over the air. So this is the IP address I got, which is the 192.168.11.0.240. I'm gonna copy and paste it here and save it and now it's going to try to upload the firmware over the air uh, to my device so with that i should be able to upload the firmware over the air uh, let's make a tiny little change to the application itself as well so that we can see that the new firmware has arrived so i'm going to turn this into ready for business over the air save it and then i'm going into the terminal window where i'm going to compile it and at the same time also show the device itself so it's going to quickly compile the application and upload it over the air on the IP address that I just specified the upload over the air will actually give a little bit of a little UDP package to the ESP application and from that ESP application will actually retrieve the update from my Mac so the thing about it is that uh, you can see it start booting here and updating the firmware 
So the thing about it is that because your Mac is actually being a server at that time, there shouldn't be any firewalls in the way. So if you have a firewall switched on, you should switch it off before you can actually uh, do these kind of things. So the firmware has arrived, it has been installed, and from there it has started booting again, and now it says that it's ready for business over the air. So from here onwards I can start implementing my other logic that I'd like to have on the device and keep updating it over the air, which is really, really convenient. So I can now basically unplug my USB cable and uh, connect it to a um, battery or something else. Well, with this, I think I've given you a very nice overview of what Platform AO does uh, to get you started. Well, I hope that you be able to do this as well and I um, you know, wish you all the best and the luck if you trying to, to do the same thing. Um, on this YouTube video, I will add some uh, links as well so that you will have information on where to go to for, for instance, the over the air routine that I just showed you. Yeah, all the best and uh, really good luck trying this out yourself. Thank you. Bye bye.